Good evening and welcome. This is a public hearing of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the City of Evanston. The zoning ordinance directs this body to hear applications for major variations, special uses, and appeals from decisions of the zoning administrator. Depending on the type of matter, this board will either make a final determination or send its recommendation to City Council. Would you please call the roll? Scott Gingold? Here. Matt Rogers? Here. Lisa Deacon? Here. Mary Beth Burns? Here. Mary McCauley? Myrna Arevalo? Here. Violetta Cullen? Present. With six members present, we do have a quorum. Also present tonight are Zoning Planner Melissa Klotz and Planning and Zoning Administrator Demir Latinovich. This is a formal meeting and there are rules that govern our proceedings. Most importantly, only one person speaks at a time, so all testimony may be accurately recorded. Anyone who wishes to address the board regarding any matter on the agenda will have the opportunity to do so at the appropriate time. Our procedure is to hear from staff on documents on file and then receive testimony and other evidence from the applicant or appellant. Next, persons who wish to make a statement regarding the matter may do so at that time. Any person with a legal interest in property located within 500 feet of the subject property may present evidence, reasonably question witnesses, or seek a continuance of the hearing. When all supporting and opposing testimony and statements have been heard, the applicant or appellant will be given the opportunity for rebuttal or a closing statement. Then the board will close the record and begin deliberations. All testimony will be under oath. Although we do not apply the strict rules of evidence, please limit your testimony or statement to your personal knowledge. When you address the board, please state your name and address and sign in on the provided sheet. Our meetings are audio and video recorded. Please make sure that you are at a microphone when asking questions or making statements so that you may be properly recorded. All proceedings are subject to broadcast at a later date. Any matter not concluded at tonight's hearing will be continued to our next regularly scheduled meeting. We do have three items on the agenda this evening. However, one of them is requesting a continuance. Um, is the applicant for 1610 Fowler Avenue present? Yes. The applicant for 1140 Lakeshore Boulevard? Yes. Thank you. Uh, with that, um, before we begin, I'd like to welcome our new board member, um, Lisa Deacon, who this is her first meeting this evening, so we'll try to go easy on her and not make her have to go through the standards or anything like that on her first night. Um, the first matter on our agenda is the minutes from our meeting on January 5th. Has everyone had an opportunity to read through those? And is there any uh, changes that need to be made? If not, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion that we approve the minutes of January 5th, 2016. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved and seconded uh, to approve the minutes for January 5th. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I'll note that any member who did not vote was not present at that meeting. Um, we will let's jump ahead and just go ahead and continue the re, or, um, address the continuance request for 1919 Church Street. Um, they're requesting a continuance to our meeting on February 16th. Is that correct? Um, is there a motion to continue that matter until that meeting? I make a motion that we continue 1919 Church Street ZBA 15ZM JV 00114 to the meeting of February 16th. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor of continuing the matter on 1919 Church Street to February 16th, 2016, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, with that, that matter will be continued till our February 16th meeting. Um, and with that, we will move into the matters that are before the board this evening. Um, the first one being 1610 Fowler Avenue. And would you please read that into the record? Leon Maupin, property owner, applies for major zoning relief to establish one open parking space in the R2 single family residential district. The applicant requests a 0.5 foot south rear yard setback where three feet is required. Zoning code section 6837C. The Zoning Board of Appeals makes a recommendation to City Council, the determining body for this case. Documents included as part of the record include variation application submitted November 20th, 2015, standards form, zoning analysis, plat of survey and site plan, 
image of property, aerial view of property, zoning map of property, and dapper draft meeting minutes of December 16th, 2015. At this point, I would ask that anybody who may be speaking to us in the matter of 1610 Fowler Avenue, please be sworn. Would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth throughout the course of these proceedings? I do. Thank you. Uh, if you would state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Leon Maupin. I live at 1610 Fowler. Thank you, Mr. Maupin. And would you please tell us about your proposal? Well, my proposal is to do two things. It's a, like a threefold thing. Um, first of all, we have a lot of weeds that grows back there. And it's, so I figure if I put the pad down, I can use that pad for reversible things. I can either use it for I can park my car, I can park my bike. We can recreate on that. It's like having a big sidewalk. I'm not going all the way up against the property line. I'm staying off the property line by a foot. It's like having a, a big sidewalk so we can, instead of having dirt, alongside the garage uh, have a bigger wider sidewalk to utilize and nothing grows back there but weeds i always have a, t a ton of weeds if i don't have someone go back there and cut them down they just grow and i just i'll spray it and i'll keep spraying it and if you ride up and down the alley it's just a ton of weeds up back there and so it'll beautify the alley clean it up and then I can use my yard as more than just my backyard. I can use the side of my yard too because I do, I do used to drive a bike. I do still own a bike and instead of parking my bike way up on my um, patio, I can park the bike on the back or I can park a car back there or like I said, we can go out in the alley and if we want to play in the alley, Kids can play in the alley because I do have grandkids. Other than um, other than the weeds situation, is there anything else um, significantly unique about the property that requires the variation you're requesting? Unique? No. It's just that I like to have something nice and clean. I don't like the dirt. No grass will grow back there. I try growing grass. It won't grow because whatever weeds are back there, it over it overtakes the grass. So I just figure why not just clean it all out? And my neighbor she didn't see any harm with it. It's like having a big sidewalk. If you had two houses and you have a sidewalk alongside the house. You don't have three. You don't have an easement there, but you have a sidewalk in between the two houses. So why not have a, a big pad alongside the property line, alongside the fence line? Mr. Maupin, do you have a garage? Yes. Don't you have a garage in the back and something like a garage in the front? Not something like a garage in front. I do have a garage. Oh, that's front. another garage. I didn't know what it was when I drove by. Yes. Okay. Just wondering. Mm -hmm. And you got a car parked in the garage already? Mm-hmm. A couple of them, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Have you considered locating this project in a different part of the property that wouldn't require a variation from the ordinance? Well, on the other side of the property line, I want to extend the garage. So, so you want to add this parking pad on the... No, I want to, on the other side of the garage, I want to extend my garage out bigger. I want to make my garage bigger in the back. In addition to this parking pad? Well, that's another project alone. Okay, so you're, if I understand you correctly, what you're saying is... The only other alternative that you could consider would be putting it on the other side of the garage, but you're already planning on extending the garage. Yes. Okay. That's another project. Other than what you've told us, is there are there any other reasons why you need the variation, or have you covered it all? 
No, it's just I like to just take it up like a foot off the fence. So, like I said, we won't have so much dirt and so much weed. Because, I, like I said, I always hire somebody to go back there and to clean it out. And I'm really getting tired of it. You know, the kids play in the backyard, they play in the alley, play basketball down the alley. And so I like to put one up so the kids can play too. My grandkids can play. So to the north of the existing frame garage at the at the rear of the property, um, there's a patio, is that correct? Yes. That connects the shed to the garage and sort of comes out a little bit there. Roughly how large is that patio? How large is that patio? Yeah. Around 23 feet long, around 12 feet wide. And it forms kind of an L shape around the garage, is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right, are there any additional questions for Mr. Malpin at this time? Um, is there anybody else who wished to speak to us on this matter? I'll just note for the record that um, the only other person in the room is the applicant for the second case. Um, so, Mr. Mopin, I guess at this point we would just ask if you have anything you'd like to say in summation before we could begin yeah, deliberation. Absolutely. All right, thank you. Uh, with that, we will go ahead and uh, close the record and begin our deliberation on this matter. Um, General thoughts from the board. I kind of think I know where some people's minds are. I don't, uh, just to confirm where you may think my mind is, I don't think the standards are met here. Um, in particular, I don't think that there are any hardships that are unique to the property that cause the need for this variation. It's probably also not the minimum change necessary. I agree. Um, I would I would support both of those decisions uh, or both of those uh, opinions. I would also note um, that the creation of a parking pad, um, which is what we're being asked to create here, um, seems a little excessive on this particular property, which already has two garages on it. Um, it seems to me that there is parking available. One of the reasons that we often will grant a parking pad is to help alleviate traffic, or I'm sorry, uh, parking congestion on the street. Um, the fact that there already appear to be multiple parking places on this particular property um, would lead me to believe that um, the addition of an extra parking space um, is really a, a little above and beyond um, what what is needed here, and um, I don't think that there is a strong argument for the need for it um, to exist. But in order to find on any matter, um, we do have to go through a set of standards. Uh, rem reminder that this is a parking space issue, so our decision is not final, but we make a recommendation to City Council on this matter, and they are the final determining body. Uh, but as part of our record, what we do is go through these standards in order to provide them with our findings. Um, the first one is the requested variation will not have a substantial adverse impact on the use, enjoyment, or property values of adjoining properties. Um, this particular case, um, creating a parking pad uh, right up against the property line um, is not something that we typically like to do. We have, we have setbacks for a reason. Um, in this particular case, I believe there would be an impact on the property, um, but with this particular case, I am willing to concede that it would not be a substantial impact. I know that other people probably may disagree with me, um, but I find that the first standard will be met. Um, the requested variation is in keeping with the intent of the zoning ordinance. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons that we look for parking in our uh, 
the creation of parking onto lots is to help alleviate any of the parking uh, congestion that occurs on some of our streets. Um, many, many of the homes that were built uh, were before people had two cars um, in the household. Um, this house, as I mentioned, has uh, several or has two garages already on the property, um, and I believe that uh, the creation of a parking pad, which to my understanding from what the applicant has stated, um, may be used for the parking of a bike, um, may be used for play, and may be used to just help alleviate weeds is not within the, uh, the intent of the zoning ordinance, so I do not believe that standard is met. Number three, the alleged hardship or practical difficulty is peculiar to the property. Um, I don't find any reason to believe that there is any true um, hardship uh, created in this particular situation. This seems to be uh, more of a desire as opposed to a, a true need uh, to be occurring on this property. And so I believe that standard number three has not been met. Number four, the property owner would suffer a particular hardship or practical difficulty as distinguished from a mere inconvenience if the strict letter of the regulations were to be carried out. Um, as I mentioned in number three, I do not see a hardship being created um, that would, is being alleviated by the requested zoning relief, um, so I don't believe standard number four is met. Standard number five, the purpose of the variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to extract additional income from the property. Um, there's been no testimony that the applicant intended to rent the space or do anything with the space that would put extra money in his pocket. Um, so I believe that that standard has been met. Number six, the alleged difficulty or hardship has not been created by any person having an interest in the property. Um, again, I'm having a hard time identifying a true hardship um, that is being requested here. Um, it appears that the, this applicant uh, is, is seeking to um, have something that he would like to have on his property, but is not necessarily a hardship, so I believe standard number six is not met. And number seven, the requested variation requires the least deviation from the applicable regulation among the feasible options identified before the ZBA. Um, again, noting that there's already multiple parking spaces available to the applicant on the property, um, the addition of an extra parking pad, um, which doesn't really seem to be necessary because there, I've not heard any testimony that, that states that a specific car will be going there or we're doing anything to help alleviate uh, parking in the neighborhood. I do not believe that standard number seven is met. Um, is everyone in agreement with my finding on standards? Yes. I am. Yes. 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 With that, I will ask for a motion, again, reminding everyone that we are recommending body on this particular matter. I move in matter um, ZBA 15 ZMJV-0107 regarding the property at 1610 Fowler Avenue that we recommend that City Council deny the zoning relief requested. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved and seconded that we recommend a denial of the application to City Council. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, with that, it will go to City Council with a recommendation um, of six opposed, zero in favor, and Melissa will let you know what the next step will be on in terms of working with Council. Thank you. The second matter on our agenda this evening um, is 1140 Lakeshore Boulevard, and at this point I would ask that that please be read into the record. Trust 80023680034, property owner, applies for major zoning relief to locate a generator and establish one open parking space in the rear yard in the R1 single family residential district. The applicant requests to locate a generator more than two feet from the principal structure, where generators must be located within two feet of the principal structure, and a 0.5 foot street side yard setback where a minimum four feet is required when screened zoning code section 6469. The applicant also requests to establish one open parking space in the rear yard with a two-foot rear yard setback where a minimum three feet is required, zoning code section 6828C4. The Zoning Board of Appeals makes a recommendation to City Council, the determining body for this case. Documents included as part of the record include variation application submitted December 30th, 2015, standards form, zoning analysis, Certificate of Appropriateness for Historic Preservation, 
plat of survey and site plan, letter of support, image of property, aerial view of property, zoning map of property, preservation commission draft meeting minutes excerpt from January 19th, 2016, dapper meeting minutes of January 13th, 2016, and additionally one letter that was passed out at the beginning of the meeting relating to the trees near the proposed parking space. Thank you. At this point, I would ask that anybody who may be speaking to us in the matter of 1140 Lakeshore Boulevard, please be sworn. Raising your right hand, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth throughout the course of these proceedings? I do. Thank you. And if you would please state your name and address for the record. My name is Steve Hazlett at 1140 Lakeshore Boulevard, Evanston. Okay. And I'm assuming this is in the paperwork somewhere, but I just want to make sure. Um, what is your relationship to the trust? Um, just a privacy matter. No, okay, I'm okay. Sure. I just wanted to make sure. That, so you are able to speak on matter of the trust yes. and everything. Like I assumed our legal had vetted all of that, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, so with that, I will ask if you would please tell us about your proposal. Okay, there are um, two matters. Um, the first one being the backup generator, which um, the zone compliant location would be on the north side of the property um, in plain view of the sidewalk, which is a um, pretty um, popular sidewalk walking to the park that is just to the east um, and we are requesting to put the backup generator behind a brick enclosed structure where the air conditioning condensers currently reside um, it, it, there's enough space there and um, to um, include the generator but also to abide by the manufacturer's warranty um, for air circulation and so forth. The reasons for doing so were to basically just uh, initially aesthetics that we would have the generator on the side of the house in plain view in a, his in a very historic district. Even the side of the house looks like a front of the house. Um, we would have to screen it with uh, landscape and so forth. Um, but um, putting it in the location um, behind the brick wall, which is a 10 inch thick brick wall, um, would also um, dampen the sound as they start up once a week is the regular required maintenance startup. And I you know, can imagine that would um, be a little abrupt to some passerbys. It's a very popular uh, sidewalk um, as your people park there and so forth. So um, the, um, that's the initial matter. Um, it's a half of it's a six inch uh, variance request um, so that um, the placement is adequately spaced between the condensers and the brick wall. How big is the generator? Uh, it's about two by three foot. It's not much bigger than an air conditioning condenser. It's not it's a backup generator and not a major or not a full generator. So you're not trying to run the whole house? Not at all. Um, the generator might I. It, is there any other mention? I had something related to that. No. The no. generator was, the, the need for the backup generator was created because the house has three ejector pumps and two sump pumps by the lake, and the um, batteries were bad on it. Um, and the batteries that required are required to back that kind of a system up are very substantial. It's about um, almost two-thirds the cost of the generator itself doesn't include installation but as we as we grew closer to deciding how to properly back up um, that situation the generator became a little bit more or a, a lot more reliable how far from the the house are you proposing to locate the generator <clears throat> the um, the the house is the corner of the house is located if you can see the column with the with the cement um, decorative feature on top. That would be the corner of the house. There's the two air conditioning condensers. In terms of the exact measurement, um, it's on an angle, it's about, it's probably about, um, it would be about four or five feet from that area. And the furthest north side of the generator would be at the three feet, six inch from the property line so if you know including that brick wall so in this particular image 
Are we looking at the space behind? I'm assuming those are the two condensers for your air conditioning that we see at the kind of at the forefront of that's, the image there? That's correct. So you're looking at that kind of empty void back there? That's correct. I actually, the space. There was actually a picture, if you move to the next slide, if you keep going, keep going. The generator is placed where we would propose that it goes. It's not hooked up. We have two hookups right now. We went ahead when we ran the piping. We piped it to where it was zone compliant, and then we continue to pipe to the proposed location um, so that depending on whichever way this would go, we could hook it up to either one of those um, places. But we thought that it would aid seeing where it would be placed and the overall impact um, by actually placing it there. May I ask, um, in reviewing the property, it looks like there was some digging done uh, in the zone compliant location. Was it originally placed in the zone compliant location? There's a mound of dirt there. That's just for the um, gas piping that uh, powers the generator. Thank you. Could the as a practical matter, could the air condenser units be moved down the line, so to speak, and have the generator located in a code compliant position? Um, apparently, uh, I discussed that, and that that would put the condensers in the non zone compliant location. Okay. So, or probably just trading one for the other. Yeah, so the that's correct. So basically, in that line of three there, there is a um, line of bushes, and it just conceals it nicely. And also, if we circle back, it does not put it in a place that is in plain view or require. Even if we did landscape, you know, the generator is going to be there. Logically, we thought I'd love a brick wall between a generator and the sidewalk. So in, the, in this particular image, the, the naked tree that is closest to us is actually a, a deciduous tree, correct? It, 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 according to the, the image, if you go back up a few. So that's that kind of greenish uh, yellow tree, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so during most of the summer months, spring and fall, you would have, it would be shielded at some level from that viewpoint as well. Not only that, there's a um, fence that will extend it actually extends into that area, and we would probably put like a two or three foot just to continue right there, just to further finish that off. Okay. It's aesthetics. You mean from inside the property? That's correct. Okay, so you just want to screen it from your own personal view as well. You're yeah. not talking about adding anything on top of the brick? No, it's okay. already... It's already pretty screened there, right. so there's a small corner. That's, that's about open. five feet, four or five feet high, yes? That yeah. brick fence? Um, the brick fence is about six feet high. It's six feet high. And how tall is the generator? About two, two feet. So it's, a, okay, similar it's a, to a it's, condenser. Okay. It's about, yeah, it's yep. very small. Okay. Is it very, very loud? Is it? They're crazy loud. Really loud? Um, <laughs> I don't think it's like a, um, I don't think it's like a, uh, a large tractor trailer, um, but nonetheless, um, it's, um, it is an engine. Um, so um, there's other, the other houses in the neighborhood seem to enjoy them, you know, or not have a problem with them. Oh, um, they don't have a problem next no, door. No, so I don't have a lot of experience with these things. The nature of it is that I'm just trying to conservatively put it in a place that I think will be the safest and not have any adverse effects that I don't know about. And you said that it would self-test like? Once a week, about a half an hour. Oh, and not in the morning or late at night or anything like that? Apparently it's whenever you schedule it to do so. Okay. So there are two things about this. One is that they generally sound about the size, they sound like, um, like a diesel truck idling. So that's what they sort of sound like. <laughs> best practice is to have it run at 10 o'clock on Tuesday when they're doing sirens so right, that I you're do. running it when everybody else is already irritated by something else. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. do it 10 o'clock on Tuesdays and you won't irritate anybody. Sounds terrific. That's great. <laughs> Everybody's thought of this stuff. Okay. The, the only question that I had in regard to the placement um, and, the, and the noise is 
and Mary Beth, you may be able to answer this since you seem to have some experience, is are we going to amplify sound by being up against the brick wall? The answer is yes. That said, it's still the best location for it running when he's out of power and needs to run a sump pump. That isn't that is a short amount of time for ComEd to come out and get him power again. So I think that the trade-off, it's not like your AC that's running for eight hours every day, right. all day long in the summer. This is when the power goes out and it's for a short amount of time while ComEd comes out. Okay. The other point that I might mention on there is that, and that's a good, I understand, um, the, the wall will actually deflect it back this way too. So um, I am fairly critical about the sound and so forth and yeah I can see where it would both amplify it but it will also deflect it right. um, back. It tends to just bounce off the hard surfaces so it's going to bounce from one wall back to the house back to the other wall and just sort of go that way but again it's it's not like running an AC condenser for right. the whole day. How close um, would you say is the closest residence other than obviously your own to this particular location? The one right across the street. So th you're, in a, you're in enough of a situation that um, spaces, spaces next to you, there's no houses that sit closer than the one across the street. That's correct. And there's a letter from that residence um, saying they're on board or they approve the okay. request. Are there any other questions about the generator? If so, um, I'd like to move on to the, have discussion on the parking pad. Um, so tell us a little bit about the parking space that you're requesting. Well, the, the garage, as you mentioned um, in the last case, um, the, the garages are not really meant for the size of cars and so forth that exists today it has one garage it's really a, a car and a half garage so when you put various you know um, equipment uh, lawn maintenance and so forth um, it uh, it's it's quite tight the um, it has a although it by appearance where you see the number 142 it has a fairly large parking um, or driveway it's still quite challenging to maneuver through that driveway as well. So um, if we have two cars, we're often putting one car outside and so forth with all the other items. So the request for the parking pad came from just a need that we have two cars, we're not, we don't have the largest cars. We can't really fit them very easily in the, in the garage unless we inhale and, um, and park them within inches of each other and clear all the stuff out of there. So the, really the pad just became as a result, or came as a result of relief for that. Um, and I didn't want to put, our neighbor has one on the south property, what would be the southwest property line, um, a fairly large parking pad. I didn't want to put one right up against that. I wanted to try to put it in a place where it would be a very large concrete area in this area. Again, the, the nature of it is we moved into the house it's a it's a lovely area and we didn't really want to start making a lot of changes so all these changes are trying to affect as little as possible the parking pad where it goes right now or where I put it right now is um, the the most hidden area within the trees that I could figure out by the alley and I'll go ahead I'm just going to ask in the image that we have showing where the parking pad setback variance request showing trees that are adjacent to pad, where does the pad sort of fit in there? Um, that one right there. Yeah, so it would be on the other side of the large tree that you are looking at right here. It would be just to the um, so is it where the pallet itself, with the plastic on it is? It really exists to the um, to the right of that, according okay. to the picture, which would be west. And is that, I can't tell if that's a tree or it looks like a pole. That's a tree. Okay, so it's a very thin tree kind of coming off the corner of the, of the plastic there. That's correct. So will that tree be removed? Yes. Okay. 
And is that the only tree that's being removed? Um, there's another small tree just to on the other side of this first one that the one centered that you see and it's even a smaller tree. Okay. The larger trees are to the um, would be kind of to the uh, south and surround the pad. So and according to the, according to the survey, there's two circles that are are you can't see it because it's not color, but there are two circles that would come out, and then the ones around sort of uh, illustrate. Um, and so none of those trees are. We don't see any of the three trees that are mentioned in the letter from Greenwise. In that in yeah. that photo, um, the there's the um, one to the largest tree to the left. There is the one that is to the um, to the corner right bottom corner over by it says two foot setback. And so those are the trees that are illustrated in the photo in the photograph right there that are around. Okay, so the two trees that are being removed are the kind, the two that kind of straddle the parking pad there that are smaller? They're on the parking pad. If you see by the eight, there is a small tree there. And okay, there, yeah. And then there's to the right of the 20, that's that one. Okay. Do you live on the property? Yes. Okay, how many people live on the property? Four of us. And how many cars are there? Two. Okay, so you said the current parking situation is tight. Do you park two cars in there, or where do you put the two cars n now? Um, one car's in the drive or er, er, in the garage, and the other car parks on the on the driveway, uh, just outside the garage. Okay. And how long have you lived there? Since August. So we've been working through the different scenarios, coming in and out of the of the house, and trying to you know figure out how to maneuver through and so forth. But the L is somewhat of a challenge when you're um, trying to, when you're coming in and out and you really have to jimmy a lot, I guess, for lack of a better word, when you're getting in and out of the driveway. So and what is gated as well. What is the proposed entrance and exiting from this space and how will it affect the, the fence that goes along that side of the property? I understand. I would we would parallel park into it, okay. And the um, the gate would be used. The existing wrought iron gate that's there would be sectioned off and split into two sections. It would be put on a roller and just intersect in the middle and roll to either side. <laughs> Once you close it, you would really not even right. notice it's there. If the, the pine needles are back there and so forth, it would probably be covered in a bed of pine needles and it would virtually disappear. That was the intent. On the Plata survey, it says 142.1 square feet. Is it 142 or is it 1,421 square feet? Sorry, on your diagram with all their markups. Yeah, and re, it's over eight. by the by the by the the existing driveway. Yes. There's a number in there. What does that number represent? Yeah, what's that yes. number? That would be the um, that would. Can you? Uh, yeah, that. I believe that is the existing um, driveway that's in there. The square so that's footage. 1,400 square feet because 142 doesn't make any sense. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now that you mention it. Um. The second question is that the the north structure on the house is that whole depth of the garage so it's 20 feet wide by the full depth of the house all the way to the east or is there a room in front of the garage to the east um to the east oh no that that's a full yard and and so that's when you're running the arrow along there, to yeah. the two X's is where the where the zone compliant location of the generator. So that's to the north. Yep, talking yep. about just talking about the garage. So is the garage all the way from the west wall to the east wall, or how deep is your garage? It is um, from the twenty yep. point one foot mark to where you have the point of the arrow. Okay, so it's about half. So it's about a 20 foot deep garage? It looks to be more than that, and there's cabinetry in the garage. 
So you can get your car fully in there, and then there's a wall of cabinetry at the front, Correct. at the leading edge. Correct. Okay. And um, talk to me about other locations, other compliant locations you guys have considered putting this parking pad. The there's so many trees in back, like, and there's specimen trees. There, when we moved in, I mean, these this looks like a. Um, I forget the name of the place in the west, but it's a tree, um, exotic tree place. They invested so much into the trees that I, mean, I look at them and I wouldn't want to move one. So they're all throughout the backyard, um, lining the fence to provide um, a, um, a barrier between the house um, across the alley. Um, and uh, so the entire backyard is covered with uh, very specimen or exotic trees. It seems weird to me to put that, that parking spot in a location that is so remote from the house mm -hmm. in a difficult way to get in and out. Mm -hmm. So it, to me, it seems like that wouldn't get used on a daily basis, but that's more like, you know, for the summer car that gets stored winter all winter long or something like that so right so it's really so that's my perception is that because it's not convenient to the house i don't see that you know uh your wife pulling in there and taking the kids out and coming across the whole yard with the kids to get in the house i'd agree with that but it's not for the extra car <laughs> okay it would be for the um the teenager or okay. <laughs> somebody who um, the w wife pulls right into the garage. That's what I would imagine. <laughs> I would imagine there. that was negotiated <laughs> up front. I often have to move the car just to make room for, you know, things. Okay. So. Okay. Um, so it seems like a weird location, and it seems like a, a better location that might not affect trees as well is just at the end of that parking of the of the drive court, right at the west edge of that extending that over just to get your parking there a does that put that in a compliant location and b does that have any effect there's a um, finished brick limestone wall surrounding the entire perimeter of the drive of the court drive, of the drive court okay and that would still require zoning relief because it would not be within the rearmost 30 feet of the yard okay so it's it's extremely finished, and uh, I would agree with you on the matter of it being in a strange location. Yeah. But it sort of is like I really don't want the parking pad to be something that we're reminded of. You know, it's it's I'm trying to put it in into a very uh, you know hidden area, and it would be used as needed so that we can avoid the parking on the street. You know, as often as necessary. May I ask uh, the dimensions of the proposed parking spot? Eight, eight by 21. And is that the minimum required to comfortably pull in and out of that spot? Um, it's plenty, it seems plenty to me. I'm not sure how to answer it, but um, in terms of uh, pulling into a into a spot, the 21 feet is the, is the, would be the greatest or the the, the dimension that is most important if you're parallel parking in. So, um, I guess what I'm asking is it uh, is it deemed excessive amount of pad in order to park back there, or is it? Yeah, it, um, good question. Um, the 21, not for parallel parking. So you need the 21 feet to parallel park in there. The width of the pad would be a minimum. Um, I mean, to comfortably park a. Yeah, and I'm not looking to put the escalator in there, but just, you know, even a um, subcompact or mid-sized car was our aim to create a space large enough for that. And the idea to create it as a parallel parking spot as opposed to a straight pull-in was, what was the thinking with that? Trees and minimal impact. Um, um, still, I guess we're required to know how to parallel park in order to get a driver's license, I think you still are. In some states, not, but 
seemed to me that if I can put one in a place that was less obvious and you parallel park into it, then that was the intent for the least impact. Oh. And can can you, I'm sorry, can you speak to what the parking situation is like on the street? I would imagine it's a congested area in summer. What is it like along Hamilton Street there? It gets pretty, um, it gets pretty full with the, the park right across the street. Thank you. The uh, typical parking space is uh, nine foot by 18 feet. That's for a pull-in. Pull yeah, there's a pull-in. That's a pull-in, so you need a little bit extra length. For the the zoning requirement for a parallel space is 8 by 21. Right. Um, I'm assuming that you're going to put in some sort of walkway to get from this parking spot to your current concrete walk? I didn't consider... Is it, that true? It's, it's very possible to put a, like a bluestone path that weaves through, right. and it would just go... There's the sidewalk that runs to the south, and it would just lead to that, right. or you just walk around to the back gate and come through there. Just with minimal as if you have three feet of snow, yeah, and totally. somebody's trying to park there. Yeah, yeah there's a few um, lime or uh, bluestone paths that weave in and around back there, just a couple little through the trees and so forth. So I imagine we might link up to one of those. Are there any additional questions for the applicant? If not, I will ask if there's anybody else who wish to speak to us in the matter of 1140 Lakeshore Boulevard present. Noting no one, uh, Mr. Hazlett, if there's anything you'd like to say in summation uh, before we close the record and begin deliberation. Um, just that the overall um, intent was to make as little change as possible. We didn't really expect to have to do a lot or hope to have to do a lot we put in a had to put in a new um, parking or driveway because it started to erupt for some reason we had to just put in a new paver system so we're just trying to make changes that um, affect the area or their property as little as possible and preserve what it originally was thank you okay um, with that we will close the record and begin our deliberation um, I have a question for Melissa and or Demir. I think you know what my question is going to be. Um, when this, what? When this case originally came before us, I had asked that the two be separated in some way. Um, law has advised us that they should be continued together. But when I go through our standards, I'm going to go through our standards separately unless there is an objection to that from staff. Um, because I have the feeling that we may have some sort of a split here on our vote and I would send along a recommendation that may be split to City Council telling them what we agree with and what we do not agree with. Um, if I'm gauging some of the comments correctly and some of the discussion points correctly from, from people here. Not necessarily. I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult for me because I don't... <coughs> It seems as though there's plenty of parking on the site. It seems uh, my garage is tinier than 20 feet and I managed to get two cars into it. So I know it can be done, it's not pleasant. But in the 1,400 square feet, it seems like there's enough space to get a couple cars in there. That being said, the lot is enormous and can easily support another, another parking pad on it, which is where it's so different from the previous case. That was a very small lot, not a very small lot, still a good size lot, but it had already had parking for five or six cars on it. Um, so that's where I see a difference here. It's just, it's just in a weird location to me, but if the owner wants it there, that's their thing. So I, I'm split on the two issues. I, my personal feeling is that the the generator probably is the minimum necessary and I'm in favor of the generator but in terms of the parking to me it seems pretty clear that we're talking about an inconvenience rather than a hardship um, they're currently able to put two cars in their garage they're currently able to put one car in the garage or one car in the driveway although it requires some I think it was described as a challenge so in my view the parking um, I don't think the parking meets the standards for a variation. 
And then I'm okay with the uh, with the generator as well. I think it's actually the best spot for it to have it behind the walls um, is the best location, regardless of how far it is from the house. So I guess what I'll do is I will go through the standards and in those particular areas where, since I'm going through the standards, I feel that one is met and one is not met, I will make that determination and then allow people to agree or disagree and um, we can look at where we are at that point. Um, you are welcome to run through the standards separately for each variance and you can also make separate motions for each variance if you'd like. Okay, thank you. Um, the first standard, again, we have seven standards that we fi must find are met. We are a recommending body to City Council, again, on this particular case because of the open parking space. Um, the first standard being the requested variation will not have a substantial adverse impact on the use, enjoyment, or property values of adjoining properties. Um, my feeling is that uh, the two specific areas that we're looking at um, with the uh, generator, um, it seems like putting it in the place where uh, it has been has been uh, sought to have it placed um, does seem to be probably the most logical place to have the least amount of impact on the adjoining properties. Um, and we have heard some comment to the fact that they can be loud, but they do not run for long periods of time. And um, as one of our members advised, if you run it at 10 a.m. on Tuesday mornings, um, everyone's upset with the city for running the sirens, and maybe they forget about the generator. Um, in regard to the parking pad, um, I do not feel that this um, will have any adverse impact. Um, it appears that it will basically be hidden um, in, the, in, the, in the woods um, in the back of the property. Um, so I feel that that standard is met on both of those specific issues. Um, number two, the requested variation is in keeping with the intent of the zoning ordinance. Um, obviously, the issue with the generator, the intent is to try to lessen the impact on the neighbors, um, just like we do with our air conditioning condensers, trying to keep them away from property lines. Um, also, though, keep trying to keep them tucked in close to the house so they kind of fit in with, with the existing structures. Um, I believe that that standard is met. Um, in regard to the parking pad, um, it is an issue that we try to, again, remove parking from our streets. Um, with this particular case, though, I do feel that there is enough um, existing parking already on the property, um, but I'm willing to concede that, uh, obviously, if they need to, to have an additional space for additional parking, um, the space where it's being placed obviously makes the most sense. So that standard is met as far as I'm concerned as well. I disagree that that standard's met uh, with respect to the parking pad. Okay, thank you. Um, number three, the alleged hardship or practical difficulty is peculiar to the property. Um, we have had discussion that the placement of the generator um, seems to make sense where it, where it is being uh, being put due to the fact that it kind of fits in with the air conditioning condensers which are already in that space. Um, it's shielded with a wall um, and it makes the most sense to, to put that in, in that particular place. Um, in regard to the parking, um, with the wooded lot that is back behind there, the existing hard structure and um, the, the many trees that currently exist, um, if a parking pad were to be placed somewhere, the most logical place for it probably is in the identified place. Um, and so the fact that they are seeking a, a hardship, though, again, as I mentioned in the previous case, is kind of where I have a problem with this. Um, not seeing a hardship for the parking, but already having identified spaces for the parking. Um, I feel that this standard is not met. I think that the hard, um, I disagree with you. I think that the hardship that's identified are the trees and that it's, it's generally in a code compliant location with the exception of a foot. So what we're talking about is a foot difference and that is that they're not pushing that parking pad back a foot more to preserve the existing root structure of trees, which I do think is a hardship. I would agree, but I have a hard time believing that there is a parking hardship overall on this particular lot. I, nobody said parking was a hardship. They're not asking for, the ver for a parking hardship. They're just asking for the location of the yes. parking. 
and on a lot that's nearly a half an acre, it seems reasonable that more than two cars is goes with a a lot of that size. All right. I agree with your original finding on the pad, Matt. I don't think that standard is met. Okay. I I would agree with Mary Beth. I believe that. Um, I, I think her interpretation of it, I, I support that. Um, number four, the property owner would suffer a particular hardship or practical difficulty as distinguished from a mere inconvenience if the strict letter of the regulations were to be carried out. Um, in regard to the generator, um, obviously uh, the particular place that, we, that would be a code compliant location, we would ask to have additional hardscaping, landscaping, or something done around it in order to shield it from the, from the street. Um, it seems the fact that a place already exists that has the stuff that we would request seems to be the most logical place to put it. Um, and the fact that uh, this would be one that I normally would say um, it would not be met, but because of the fact that we would usually condition it with something to require hardscape or landscape to help shield it, I believe that the fact that that's already been presented to us um, does make this standard met. Um, number five, the purpose of the variation is not based. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if you had distinguished on number four for the parking pad, but on, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, on the parking pad piece, to me, the testimony was squarely uh, that the that the current parking presents a challenge that they have to jigger the car around a little bit, and to me, that seems like an inconvenience that doesn't um, warrant uh, the the relief requested. Thank you. Um, number five, the purpose of the variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to extract additional income from the property. In regard to both the issues, the generator and the parking, um, there's been no testimony that would lead me to believe that uh, these in any way would be putting additional income into the pocket of the owner. Um, the generator seems to be pretty much a necessity for locations that are this close to the lake and um, probably do have flooding issues from time to time due to ground saturation. Um, and because the parking space would be used exclusively by the owners of the property, um, I believe that this standard is met on both of those cases. Uh, number six, the alleged difficulty or hardship has not been created by any person having an interest in the property. Um, in regard to the generator, obviously the location that's being sought for placement um, is, is the typical place that we would ask for it to be put in terms of behind a wall with, with shrubbery around it. Um, the owner has just recently purchased the house and been in the house for less than a year, if I understood correctly. Um, the fact that the parking is being sought um, the, I mean, again, I'm, I'm having a hard time identifying um, the, that the need for parking is really a hardship here, and I understand your point of the trees being the hardship, um, but I, I, I just can't believe that the standard is met. I agree with that. I disagree for the reasons I said before. I didn't know if you were going to say that, so I just wanted to give you that opportunity. <laughs> um, and number seven, the requested variation requires the least deviation from the applicable regulation among the feasible options identified before the zoning board. Um, in regard to the generator, obviously, uh, normally we would request the, the least deviation would be to put it into a compliant location. Um, because of the existing nature of the of the wall that exists there, the landscaping around it, um, and the space that's there next to the air conditioning condenser seems to be the, the most logical place. Uh, I believe the standard is met for that. And number seven, uh, in regard to the parking, um, the Again, I'm having a hard time um, finding the need for additional parking. I have to believe that if that parking pad in some way needed to be, and I'm sorry, if the parking um, structure that's currently there had needed to be enlarged, it was recently updated, and I believe that that could have been a good time to uh, adjust for additional parking if necessary. I would just add that the existing 1,400 square foot parking area could be enlarged. Uh, to make it a little bit less of a challenge than it currently is. If I'm not mistaken. 
just to clarify, if I'm not mistaken, enlarging that parking pad is still a non-compliant location, so it would still need the variance. And there was testimony that there is a brick wall surrounding the um, the drive court, so that is a bit of a hardship. Yes, it would require possibly a variation depending upon how it was structured, but I don't believe that I would be more willing to allow that type of a variation than what we're being sought, what's being sought here. We'll have to talk. I'm curious what the what, the distinction you make between those two. In my view, <clears throat> it doesn't the the expanding the current space doesn't require putting a new concrete island on its remote corner of the property, along with probably a walkway leading to it. But they're not over on lot coverage. They're not over on an unimpervious surface. They're only asking for a foot variance off the rear yard setback. If you were to put it adjacent to the, the existing parking pad, the existing drive court, you'd be asking for it to be 30, 50, 30 to 50 feet off of the rear yard setback. I'm just, I, I'm just trying to understand. And maybe I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you really need to at this okay, point based on, on the way everyone has been having okay. discussions here. Okay. Um, I think Scott and I are, are kind of the minority here on the parking Fine. pad. Um, and again, uh, since this is a recommendation, we don't sure. necessarily even need the four votes uh, one way or the other. Sure. Um, well, well, we need a consensus one way or the other to make a recommendation. <laughs> well, yes, and we will. I think a we lack will of have that. A lack of consensus is a, is a, is a non-recommendation, right? Yes, if there, if if we were to you don't get four, four we or three against to three, you don't have to get four. You just have to get a majority. But we wouldn't have a majority because we'd be three and three. Right. Um, I would ask normally at this point if everyone agrees with my findings, but I know that several people do not agree with my findings based on what has been said. Um, so with that, um, well, I think in the interest of understanding where we're at, maybe we should have a straw poll from people at least on the parking. It seems like there's no objections from what I heard to the generator, but there's at least a two to one split against by voice of, of the parking. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm just gonna make the recommendation that we do motions as two separate motions, um, since there will be some discussion on the, on the second part of it. Um, so, with that, I would ask if there is a motion in regard to the generator first, since that seems to be where we're most in agreement. Um, sure, I'll move in the matter ZBA 15 ZMJV-0115, the property 1140 Lakeshore Boulevard, with respect to the portion of the application related to the placement of the generator that we recommend that City Council <clears throat> allow uh, the variation requested subject to the condition that the development be in accordance with the testimony and documents submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion in regard to our recommending approval for the generator to city council? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So that will have a vote of six in favor, zero against. Um, the second portion would be in regard to the open parking space. Um, I would ask at this point if there is um, anybody who did not voice anything that would like to say anything at this particular moment. And if not, I will just ask for a motion, um, a favorable motion to be made by Ms. Burns. I move that in uh, ZPA 15 ZMJV-0115, 1140 Lakeshore Boulevard, with respect to the open parking pad location, that we recommend a, um, approval to the City Council um, conditioned upon the fact that everything be in compliance with the testimony on record. And documents on record. And documents on file. I just, if I, I'm not going to vote for this, but <clears throat> if I were inclined to, I would suggest that you account for the opinion of the arborist and add a condition that the uh, undisturbed root space be as limited as possible. I accept that amendment. Second. 
it's, it has been moved and seconded uh, that we recommend approval of the open parking space um, at the rear of the property to City Council. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. No. With a vote of two in favor and, I'm sorry, with four in favor, two against. I can just make up rules now. Um, with four in favor, two against, it will go to City Council with a recommendation for approval. Um, and Melissa will work with you on exactly what the next steps will be and when you'll be appearing before P&D and, and what you'll need to do for that. Thank you. Uh, with that, um, is there any other matter that needs to be brought before the board? Just a reminder that we do have a meeting next Tuesday. See you there. I move that we adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 With that, we stand adjourned until our meeting on February 2nd in City Council's, City Council Chambers.